Welcome back to AO World. Today we'll be exploring the world famous European holiday destination, Venice. Venice is a beautiful city in the north of Italy, made up of six sestieri or city areas. The summers can get very hot, making it very difficult to walk around all day and not so easy to enjoy this wonderful city. The best time to visit Venice is therefore in April and May or September to November, when it's not too warm but there are still enough hours of sun a day. If you do decide to visit in the summer, don't forget to pack sun cream and a hat or other form of head coverage. For more detailed information and packing tips, check out the packing list on our AO World website. All in all, Venice is more a day city and doesn't have the most active nightlife. It is a wonderful city for a meal or a stroll in the evening, but most activity happens during the day. The Canareggio area is bustling with activity in the late afternoon evening and is a lovely area to enjoy an Aperol Spritz. Being as it is one of the top holiday destinations worldwide, Venice can be very crowded, especially in the summer and around the main sites. We AO recommend booking tickets for the sites you'd like to see in advance to avoid wasting time in long queues. If you arrive in Venice by plane, then you will either take a bus or a boat into the city. The bus trip can take up to an hour and a half, whereas the boat can take between 40 and 70 minutes. The boat terminal is about a seven minute walk from the airport and is almost twice as expensive as taking the bus. There is always the option to take a taxi and this trip only takes about 20 minutes, but is very expensive. There are two main train stations in Venice, Mestre on the mainland and the central station Santa Lucia near the city center on the Cana Grande. Mestre and the city centre are connected via a long bridge and there are buses that can take you from the train station to the Piazzale Roma. In case you arrive by cruise ship or other large forms of water transportation, you will dock at the main harbour. From there, the so-called people mover, which is like a train, will take you to the city centre for a small fare. You can buy tickets directly at the station. If you arrive by car, then there are a few parking options. You can either park near the airport in Mestre, or directly at the Piazzale Roma. The closer you get to the city centre, the more expensive the parking is. Parking near the airport is therefore the cheapest option, and some companies offer free shuttles to the boat terminals, or you can take the bus. To find out more about where to park, prices, and how to get to the city from there, visit our website, aoworld.org. Venice is completely pedestrianised, so the easiest way to get around is on foot. This is restricted slightly as there are lots of small sets of steps across bridges and into alleyways, and not many ramps alongside them. There are water taxis, gondolas and vaporettos available throughout the city. These can help you get around quicker and often be a big help in crossing the Canal Grande or simply guide you around the canals. Vaporettos are the equivalent of a bus on water. They are one of the cheaper transportation options if you plan on using them more than once. The Vaporetto Line 1, for example, is a great way to explore the Cana Grande. Water taxis are what you'd think they'd be, a taxi on water. A water taxi trip is certainly more comfortable than a Vaporetto ride on longer trips with luggage, such as getting to and from the airport. Comfort does come with a price, but the time you save is quite a lot. You can book water taxis in advance to make sure you reach your destination on time and be sure to ask about the price before boarding. Perhaps you can share the ride with some fellow holidayers headed for the same destination. For exclusive tips on how to get around in Venice, pricing information and how to best book a water taxi, visit our website aoworld.org. The Canal Grande is the largest canal in Venice and is the main route for water transportation. The canal is about 4 kilometers long and 30 to 40 meters wide. It starts at the Piazzale Roma and winds its way through the entire city centre through to the Punta della Dogana. A boat ride along the Canal Grande is like a relaxing sightseeing tour. It is also a great way to get a feel and first orientation of the city as the canal functions as the city's main road. To cross the Canal Grande, you can either use one of the four bridges or you can use the gondola ferries that will take you across the wide canal for a reasonable price. The Piazza San Marco, 
also known as St. Mark's Square, is the most renowned square in Venice. The square is surrounded by the facades of other beautiful sites, such as the St. Mark's Campanile and the St. Mark's Basilica. The square even extends to the right of the Doge's Palace towards the water, with its so-called Piazzetta. Where St. Mark's Square meets the water is the beginning of the Cana Grande, and this point is called the Bacino di San Marco. The square is highly air recommended, either to simply walk around and explore the area, or to find somewhere nice to eat or drink. In the evenings, there is always live music and the square is lit up, creating a wonderfully romantic atmosphere. Eating and drinking on St. Mark's Square is certainly not something to do on a low budget, but it is a worthwhile experience to sit outside here and take in the delightful atmosphere and watch the buzz of tourists and locals alike. The entrance to the Doge's Palace is just past St. Mark's Square and the Piazzetta. It is certainly a recommended to buy the ticket in advance or else you risk queuing for a very, very long time. The tour may take some time, usually at least two hours, depending on how interested you are, but is certainly worth it and a very interesting way to spend a day in Venice. The palace was the place of residence for the Doge and the Venetian government for over 800 years. The building has typical Venetian architecture and is beautiful from the inside and out. To find out more about the palace's rich history and tips for your visit, go to our website aoworld.org. Just around the corner from St. Mark's Square, there's a great view of the Bridge of Sighs from the Ponta della Paglia. The Bridge of Sighs crosses the 8 meter wide Rio di Palazzo and is the connection from the Doge's Palace to the new prison in Venice, La Prigione Nuove. The bridge was constructed in the early 17th century and the inside of the bridge is separated into two walkways, divided by a wall so that the prisoners couldn't directly pass each other. You can visit the prison and cross the bridge within the capacity of the Doge's Palace Museum Tour. This is certainly one of the top two sites in Venice and is highly AO recommended. The Bridge of Sighs gets its name from a legend. When the prisoners were transferred to the prison, their last view of freedom in this beautiful city was from this bridge. And when they crossed the bridge, they would sigh with sadness. When crossing the bridge, visitors have the opportunity to see that very same view and perhaps also sigh for the whole experience. Beside the Doge's Palace and on St. Mark's Square, you can visit the St. Mark's Basilica. This is an incredibly stunning basilica from the inside and out. When the basilica is under construction, you can only visit the museum and the balcony, but this still gives you an interesting insight into the history and architecture of this basilica. The building is exceptionally photogenic from the outside and the balcony gives you a lovely view of St. Mark's Square. The entrance to the ground floor of the Basilica is free and AIA recommended. But remember that it is not permitted to take pictures inside the church and to dress appropriately. Another great site on St. Mark's Square is the Campanile di San Marco, or in English, St. Mark's Campanile. A campanile is a bell tower and this bell tower is the tallest tower in Venice. There is a fantastic view of the city from the top. The tower was completed in the 12th century and functioned as Venice's landmark for sailors and seamen. If necessary, a fire was lit in the tower at night and the campanile functioned as a lighthouse. The tower has been damaged many times in the past due to earthquakes and fires, but today stands strong as a beautiful landmark in this wonderful city. Another beautiful design feature Venice has to offer is the Rialto Bridge. The Rialto Bridge is the oldest of the four Canal Grande crossing bridges and one of the most famous constructions in the city. The bridge has been open to the public since the 20th of March 1591 and gives a great view of the Canal Grande. The Rialto Bridge is certainly a tourist hotspot, so the bridge and the surrounding area can be quite crowded a lot of the time. Close by, there are also lovely places to eat and drink for a very reasonable price offering classic Venetian views of the canal. No Italian city would be complete without a theatre. Venice is the home of the Teatro La Finis, which translates to the Theatre of the Phoenix. The theatre has this name because the original opera house burnt down in the fire of 1773, but was then reopened on the 16th of March 1792 with its new name. To visit the theatre, you can either buy a visitor ticket, which allows you to simply visit the concert hall empty, but there are also events on from time to time. 
You must purchase tickets in advance for the specific events, but seeing a performance in this venue is definitely a worthwhile experience. If you'd like to find out more about ticketing information and opening times, be sure to visit our website. Not too far northeast from Venice's city centre is the island of Murano. Murano is known for its glass blowers and the amazing artwork they produce. You can reach this island on the Vaporetto lines 4.1 and 4.2. Visitors to the island can sometimes watch the glass blowers hard at work in their studios. There is also the opportunity to visit the glass museum in Murano and shop for fantastic products such as scarves, vases and jewellery made of Murano glass. Murano glass is a high quality product that is handcrafted with care. This also means it's not a cheap souvenir, so if it's on offer for a cheap price, look into the product a little more before making a decision. In Venice, there are various activities on offer. Of course, you can simply wander and enjoy the sights, but for those wanting a little more, there is also more to do. Wherever you are in Venice, a church is never too far away. There are so many around the whole city, and most offer free or very cheap entry. The architecture and art within the churches is absolutely stunning and gives an insight into the classic northern Italian church culture. In a city with so much water, there is also the option to rent canoes and stand-up paddleboards. But you should head off with a guide as to not get lost or end up in places where you shouldn't be. The most typical and well-known way to explore the city on water is, of course, a gondola ride. A gondola ride is certainly the romantic highlight of any trip to Venice. Until the 19th century, this was the primary form of transportation in Venice for goods and products, as well as people. Nowadays, it isn't the cheapest way to get around Venice, but it does let you see this beautiful city from a unique point of view. You can recognize the gondoliers by their striped clothes, and they are often standing next to their gondola or at the main tourist locations. Most of the gondoliers speak a decent amount of English and will tell you stories about the city and certain sites as you pass along the way. As the popular holiday destination that it is, Venice is full of shops selling handmade products, antiquities, clothes and, of course, souvenirs. It's usually quite easy to differentiate between the cheap touristy stalls and the authentic original shops. Always remember to keep the receipt with a note of the value added tax, also known as VAT. If you do not get a receipt upon purchasing something, then the purchase was illegal and you could be charged with tax fraud at customs or other controls. There is only one shopping mall in Venice city center, the Fondaco dei Tedeschi. The terrace of the Fondaco dei Tedeschi, which must be booked online at least a day in advance, offers a great view of the Canal Grande and the Rialto Bridge. The access is free of charge. This is certainly an AIA recommended spot, so be sure to book your ticket a day before so that you can visit this beautiful terrace and take in some wonderful views of Venice. When exploring the shops, be sure to peek into a few classic Venetian mask shops. These masks are a beautiful and traditional Venetian souvenir. In some of the shops, you can even see the mask makers hard at work and see how these beautifully crafted masks come to be. If you fancy shopping for some fresh goods, then check out the Mercato di Rialto. This is a fruit and fish market on the Cana Grande that offers a variety of fresh fruit and vegetables alongside seafood and fresh fish. The market is not open at all times. To find out the exact opening times, visit our website aoworld.org. Venice is the ideal place to eat outside for both lunch and dinner. In an evening though, a lot of places will not allow you to sit just for a drink. They do require that you have a bite to eat. Luckily though, the food in Venice is generally of a very high standard and authentically Italian, which means even something as simple as a pizza margarita tastes absolutely amazing. Italian cuisine has something for everyone, and it's a lot of fun to try the different dishes on the search to find your favorite. Thank you for joining us on this trip to Venice, a beautiful city full of canals, small walkways and historical and artistic sites. We hope you found the important information you need and have a fantastic time when you make it there. For more information, advice and tips, be sure to visit our website aoworld.org. Here you can find the most important facts and advice easily available at your fingertips. 
The website is especially helpful for trip preparation, packing, and is a great companion during your travel. So be sure to bookmark it on your phone. Want to be part of AO World and not miss out on any new locations? Subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in Venice. Thank <laughs> you.